Gary, afternoon. Great to see you. Yeah, Andrew, you well? Yeah, very well, thank you. Um, clearly a bit of a challenging time at the moment. Three defeats on the spin, no, no winning four. But have you seen a, a real positivity around the, the group? The, the reaction in training, has it been what you'd like? Uh, yeah, the, the group's absolutely fine. Um, I think um, the fact that, that three losses come on the trot doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. It's, we've, we've played nine Premier League games. We've been competitive in all of them. We've, we've lost three. Um, performances, I think, have, have always been been what I expect from the lads um, generally for the for the whole nine games. So, yeah, we take a real right, clear view on on where we are, what we're trying to achieve, and sometimes at this level, losses are going to come in in, in batches. Um, of course, we we, we want to make sure that we we get something from the weekend. Clearly, the, the game against Tottenham will will sting because of the the fact you're being two 0 up at at one stage. How much have you learned from yourself in this last? run of games and, and fixtures where results haven't gone as well as what they did at the start of your, your interim manager reign? Yeah, no, I feel exactly the same about it. I think um, obviously initially on Saturday, huge disappointment from, from everyone, all of us, squad, myself, um, because, of, because of how it goes. Um, but uh, I mean, if you think back to the last time we played one of the, the big clubs in the, in the Premier League, I may, may, maybe Newcastle, but prior to that, we. Liverpool, Manchester City, and Arsenal, um, and we we never managed to lay a glove on them. Really, we um, whereas you look at the Tottenham game, it was very very different to that. So it, it shows how far the, the group has managed to come from from those moments. I think we we took Tottenham very very close. Um, of course, the end of the game, they they, they pin us back and um, they bring some real good players on the pitch, but they still still needed two set plays. Don't remember Trav's making too many too many open play saves. So. Um, yeah, it was. It was. There was a lot of positives in that in that Tottenham performance. What's the Bournemouth team news ahead of the weekend game with Leeds? Yeah, we're we're the same as we were. So um, comes too quick for Lloyd Kelly and uh, David Brooks uh, and Neto, um, but the, the rest of the group are fine. And Leeds picked up their first win in nine matches um, at the weekend. What have you seen from your analysis about the way that Jesse Marsh has set that team up, and perhaps how different they are to? The start of the season where they were winning games, where recently they've not found that so easy. Yeah, I think I've looked. I'm, I'm really surprised they are where they are in the league. I've looked at they 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 come up really well on all their all, all the sort of numbers and stats, the chances created, and um, their big energy, press really aggressively. Probably the the, the highest pressing team in the league. Um, so they have a real clear identity, um, and as you, as you say, a, a massive result at, at Anfield for them in in the last game. So um, it, it'll be a big test going to Ellen Road. Um, so it's always a tough place to go, especially the, the the way they play at the moment. So front foot and so aggressive, it'll it'll be a good test for us. Three games now until the World Cup. Are you still in your mind preparing to take all three Bournemouth matches? I'm just preparing to take the next one at the moment, um, and then we'll see see where we go after that. You've not been given any indication as to there may be a change before the World Cup if they were to make one or no. I'm just yeah. I've been tasked as as I was from the start with taking the next game, um, and that's as far ahead as we as as we look at the moment. Thanks, Gary. All right. Elvis. How how did Mark Travers react after the the equaliser uh, against Spurs? Um, yeah, he's fine. I think um, in in any goal, if you look back through them, there'll always be well, normally five or six small errors where you think, oh, we could have stopped it there. Um, so, yeah, I think it went. when a goal goes in like that, everyone's thought is to look at the, the goalkeeper, but there are, there, are other, there are other errors in there. So um, I thought Trav came back in, was, was secure in most parts, looked co confident with his feet. Um, like the, the other lads used the, used the fact that Kiefer Moore was in the team really well for us. Um, so, yeah, Tra Trav is absolutely fine. He knows he's... He's a top goalkeeper and he's, he's worked hard this week and re ready to go again at Leeds. So there's no sort of hang up because, of course, his previous Premier League appearance was was the trip to Liverpool, then the disappointment against Spurs. But he's he's shaken that off quickly, has he? Yeah, I don't think there was much to shake off. To be honest, I think he um, like a, a corner a corner drops to the back post that he thinks he can get and he doesn't. Um, I mean, we've all we've all made small mistakes like that before. When you're a goalkeeper, sometimes they go in your goal. Um, he's absolutely fine. Yeah, he's no, no problem at all. On the other side of the coin, Marcus Tavernier had his first goal involvement against Spurs in a Bournemouth shirt. Has that given him an extra spring in his step? 
Um, yeah, I think, I mean, he's always had a spring in his step. Um, I think he, he's brought large, um, he's brought loads of energy to us this season. Um, sometimes playing in that wing-back role, sometimes playing slightly higher. He gives great energy and pace down the side for us, takes us up the pitch. Um, and that, that, that final bit is is what we work very, really hard on with him um, and, and with, with the other players because it's, it's important for us that when we arrive there, as we've touched on a lot, um, when we arrived that we managed to produce some quality um, and, and he did. We, we scored two great goals. Um, going back to the other end, you know, it's not just the goalkeeper, as you mentioned, but corners have, have been an issue. Have you put extra work into defending corners this week? Yeah, we always work really hard on it. Always work hard on it. So, um, the, the second one, so the third goal, I was disappointed with because it was something we'd, we'd worked on and covered and we didn't carry it out properly. Um, I think other goals that go in, you sometimes, if it's a moment of brilliance or there's an individual error or you can accept those ones, it's the ones that you've prepped for um, and you don't carry out the, the detail and the plan. Those ones hurt as a, as a coach because you, like, you, you've seen those come in um, and you've prepped the boys for them. So that, that, that one was disappointing. Um, so we, we need to make sure we stop those ones. If we can stop the ones that, that we're prepped for and we, we do our work on, and then if there's any others that are a bit of a surprise or someone does something brilliant or someone falls over, then you have to accept those. But the ones that you can see coming, we, we, we need to deal with better. Did that linger with you, that you know that particular source of disappointment? Then that, that was hard to get over for you, was it? Um, no, not hard to get over. Just um, yeah, just disappointment at the time because it's, it's cost us a point at that, at that stage. Um, and then very quick to, to analyse it fix it and, and move on. Fair enough. Um, there is a theory that Everton, Villa and Fulham have shown the way to, to get at Leeds, who've been exceptional against the top six and perhaps struggled a bit against, against the others this, this season. Sitting back, frustrating, going direct. Have you seen anything from, from games like that that, uh, that, can, that can help you this weekend? Um, I think what, what I've seen of Leeds is they... They press really, really high. Um, they want to win the ball back high up the pitch. Um, they have real pace in their team, especially on transition. So when they do win the ball back, they're a big threat. Um, and I, I mean, those those games that you mentioned, they were unlucky not to win, in my in my opinion. I thought um, I thought they performed well in in all of those. That'll do me. Thank you. All right. Gary, hello. Um, how did the players feel when they come into training the first session after the Tottenham game? What's the attitude in the squad now? Yeah, no, fine, fine. I think the real disappointment is in the dressing room initially after the after the game. Obviously, it's a, it, it, I mean, whenever you suffer a late goal that costs costs you points, it, the, the 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 changing room is obviously feels that. Um, but after that moment, after after I'd spoken to them, and and we come back into work, we we had yeah, the boys were absolutely fine, just geared up to to getting ready for Leeds. Um, take the huge positives from it that. They managed to run a, a very good Tottenham team who are now qualified for the champs, last 16 of the Champions League very, very close. Um, so, yeah, we, we take positives from it and we, we try and fix the little bits that need fixing and, and move on. I know it was a defeat, but do you take any pride in Harry Kane saying what a good side you are and what a good job you've done as manager since you've taken over? Um, I, I didn't know he'd said that, but no, um, I don't, yeah, I, I mean, I took pride um, more, of the la more from the lads in them carrying out a real detailed game plan um, and it, it working so well um, but then obviously the, the disappointment is that we, we, we didn't quite manage to, to sustain it. Has anything changed from the six unbeaten run to the three defeats in a row for you? Anything in the squad or are you just on an unlucky run at the moment? Um, yeah, no, I, w I wouldn't call it unlucky. I think um, it's just that the nature of the Premier League, I think we... Um, said before we, we we can go out in any game give a hundred percent and there is still a chance that we can lose it that's, that's just the nature of it so um as, as long as it as long as it looks like us along it as long as it is fully committed as long as we give a good account of ourselves we we accept that the, the chips that la will land where they land um and and hopefully enough of them come out on on our side did you watch um liverpool leeds on saturday night when you got in and if so what did you make of that leeds performance because it was a bit unexpected winning at Anfield. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were, it was it was what I'd already seen from them, really. Of course, them, you, no one expects them to go and win at Anfield, so it's a real tough place to go, but um, they didn't alter their game plan, really. They stuck to what they do. They have a real clear identity. 
Um, so yeah, it was a, obviously a big result for them. Um, yeah, they, they they have they have big strengths, and we need we need to make sure we're ready when we get there when we get there on Saturday. When you go up to Ellen Road on Saturday, are you going to change anything? Maybe go a little bit more defensive, just get a point and sort of stop the defeats, or are you just going to go up there and try and play as you as you have done since you've taken over? Um, I mean, game game plan wise, I won't be giving away to any details, um, but. But yeah, we go we go there to try and win the football match. Um, that's always always my first thought in every game we've played so far. Whether it ends up looking that way and um, whether you end up having to settle for a draw is is another thing. But we we, we go there to try and win the football match. Thanks. Good luck. All right. Gary, is there a time frame on uh, Lloyd Kelly, David Brooks, and Neto? Um, so Neto will not play again before the World Cup. Um, the World Cup break might come too soon for Lloyd. He's doing well. Um, he's doing well. He's made some some big strides. Um, but the break might come too soon for him. We'll have to we we'll have to see on that one. Um, and I, I think the same for for David Brooks. I don't think we'll we'll see him before the World Cup. Just to ask you about a player that everybody thought was injured. That Dom Solanke leaving West Ham in a protective boot. What does it say about him that six days later he's still ready to play? Yeah, he was he was he was keen to play. We had to leave it quite late to figure out whether he could or he couldn't. Um, yeah, and he was he was he was keen to give it a go for us. Um, and he's been fine since. So yeah, d delighted that we managed to get him through the game. He's trained well again this week. Um, so yeah, d Dom's in a good place. Just looking at Ellen Road, Gary. I know that you played in front of very partisan crowds at Portsmouth, and it's probably fair to say that some of the more modern stadiums have lost a little bit of the atmosphere. The same cannot be said for Ellen Road. What's it like playing there as a visiting player? Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's an in, intense atmosphere. The way the team play this season adds to that as well. Um, so for sure you need to be ready and you, you, you need to make sure you can you can deal with what's coming because um, yeah, they, they try and make it as difficult as they can for the for the opposition. Um, but the, the boys have been to some, some places similar to that already. Obviously, Nottingham Forest has a, has a big atmosphere and um, Newcastle, especially, so the, the, the lads are the lads are well equipped to to go and deal with that and put on another good performance. One lad in particular, Lewis Cook, going back to his old stomping ground where he was reared and where he came through the ranks. Modest guy, we know. He said it's not really. This isn't about me. It's about us getting three points. What's it like for an ex-player going back to a club where he's got such strong ties? You know, I, I think he sums it up well there. I think it, that's how I always felt. It was like, yeah, there's a little bit of you that wants to do well in that game, but you, I mean, you always want to do well anyway. Um, and as, as as he rightly says, it's, it's about the team. Um, Lewis Cook's been brilliant for us um, since that, since since I, I took over in the Wolves game. He's been been an integral part of of, of every performance we put in. So um, it, it'll, it'll be big again for us on Saturday, I'm sure.